Hey friends, today on Doodle the Travel Bug, it's another installment of Graveyard Picnic. And today, we're visiting the final resting places of famous drink inventors. First up, we're headed to Bardstown Cemetery in Bardstown, Kentucky, a beautiful small town known as the bourbon capital of the world. So, you guessed who this is. <laughs> Probably the location gave it away too, huh? Yeah, yeah, Being in Kentucky and Bards, what is it, Bard Bardstown? Bardstown. Yeah. yeah the, the world capital of bourbon. Yeah. So, yeah. So. so, and there's no guessing what our picnic is going to be. We're getting schnackered up in a graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly. I, <laughs> I got the little taste through. Oh, it look, actually, it looks huge like this. Just, <laughs> no, we just got the little taste. We got the little taster. I thought it'd be disrespectful to you know, chug a big bottle of Jim Beam in a Again, cemetery. In urban country, I think, I, think, I think they'd allow it. <laughs> yeah, mother's milk, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Colonel James B. Bean, at the age of 69, when Prohibition ended, brought his family's bourbon company back to life by rebuilding the distillery in Claremont, Kentucky. And he unveiled Jim Beam shortly after, and it's been the world's number one bourbon ever since. Ready? Cheers. Mm, bourbon -y. Yep, that's the burn I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you should pounce. Ugh, it tastes like burning. <laughs> what it, this is good, we, we drink this in the fall, right? We put this in apple cider, but I don't, I can't drink this straight. Yeah. Ugh. Really our style. Next, we swing over to Woodmere Cemetery in the neighborhood of Springwell's Village in Detroit, Michigan. We are in Detroit, and we are at the grave of James Verner. Daddy might know. Do you think you have a clue? You don't have to say it, Daddy. I don't know who, I, who this person is. I have no idea. All right. This is the oldest drink, possibly one of the oldest drinks in the United States. Tang? <laughs> Tang? Tang? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh... it... The pastime sharing tang with my great 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 grandpa. Alec, here's a clue for you. You drink this if you're on a boat and your belly kind of gets a little yucky. Say rum and coke. <laughs> what do you drink on a boat if your belly's sick? Ginger ale. Ginger ale! Yeah. And not just any ginger ale, but his name is. You want to hold it? Yeah. Oh, let me see. Verner's. Verner's. James Verner. Nice. So, and he actually used to put real ginger in it. So it did actually have benefits to, to help you, you know, feel better if you were a little nauseous because that's what ginger does. Let's not shake it up, Biebs. James Verner was an American pharmacist who became famous for inventing and selling Verner's brand ginger ale in 1880. It's so explode! One, two, three! Yeah, we'll see. This is what this kid needs is sugar in the morning, huh? Some sugar here. Mm. Ah. Cheers, James Verner. Graveyard picnic. <laughs> Graveyard picnic. And lastly, we're headed to Miami Valley Memorial Garden, just south of Dayton, Ohio, in Centerville. Do 
today we are at the grave of Ermel C. I think I'm gonna say Fraze, right? He didn't invent a drink. He was an Indiana farmer who opened a machine shop in Dayton. And one night, late at night, he invented this container for drinks. Back uh, before, I think, the 60s, when you opened a can, you had to use a key or an opener. But he invented the self-opening can. What? No, he didn't actually invent a drink. He invented the pull tab, the lever that opened. I love that sound. That is a good sound. It's not everything. Yeah, so beer and pop and sparkling water, everything. Oh, here's the other one. There we go. He had to take out an $800 loan to open his tiny machine shop. And once he invented this, he was making $500 million a year. So cheers, Ermel. Cheers. Good invention, huh? Yep, good stuff. For more unique travel shows, like and subscribe to see where Doodlebug goes next.